My name is Folu Ogunke, and some people know me as Folu Storms. I'm a traveler, presenter, lover of music, adventure, and all things African. So I found a way to combine all these things. Join me as I discover the new Africa. This time, we're heading to Calabar in Nigeria. My adventures have brought me home to Nigeria and specifically to the wonderful city of Calabar. Considered to be the premium tourist destination in Nigeria, Calabar is located in the southeastern part of Nigeria. It's the capital city of Cross River State and is well known for its various festive celebrations, especially during the month of December. And it also happens to be my motherland. No, literally, my mother is from Cross River. So I'm very proud to show you one of my home states. I'm a little tired after flying, so I head over to the hotel. During my stay, I'll be at the Tanapa Lakeside Hotel. So once I get in, I quickly drop off my things, change and head out to the water park. Thank you. to see people laughing and really just having a good time. I myself quickly found a quiet spot to settle down and watch what turned out to be a pretty good game of football. That is until night time. Because at night, this city really wakes up and a good place to find out what to do throughout the night is the Christmas village. Here there are all sorts of shops with people selling their wares, some trying on items, and some who are not so happy with the prices. I myself tried on a few things. I think this is nice, I think this suits me. I think it's good. Yeah? Should I go with this? Yeah. <laughs> However, after walking about a little bit, the best find was this tiny stall selling fantastic art. How long have you been painting for, if you don't mind my asking you? I've been painting for close to 15 years now. Wow. 15 years. But don't be fooled, there's more to do at the Christmas village than just shopping. There's also food and drink. Which means I quickly got myself a bottle, haggled over some change, and laughed with the performing comedian before heading home. I am not staying out late because tomorrow is the big day. Tomorrow is the Calabar Carnival! Carnival Day is such an exciting time because everybody gets involved. I'm talking old, young, whoever you are, it doesn't matter. And one of my favorite things about the Calabar Carnival is how colorful and bright it is and watching beautiful floats going down the street. I got into the action straight away with a little bit of dancing of my own. Now the Calabar Carnival runs through most of the town and at the start there's a tiny bit of dancing <laughs> but by the time you get part way through everybody is in full carnival swing. The dances are hectic and the beat is infectious. Everyone is so happy. That is the best thing about Africa's largest street party. And as the carnival tapers off, I quietly find my way into town to explore. 
Okay, so the carnival has been going on all day and I hear some of the bands are now finally at the stadium, ready to dance, perform, and performances will go on through the night. But me, time for some food. So your factory in Calabar, you gotta visit it. My last trip in Cross River State before I leave is to the Obudu Mountains. Traveling by bus, it's a long six hour ride from Calabar to Obudu, and you spend it rolling along a narrow, winding road with peaceful yet beautiful forests on either side. I arrived at my mountain villa, which is one of several three bedroom accommodation available at the Obudu Mountain Resorts, <laughs> with a mountain view, of course. Then I quickly freshened up and went out. I was picked up by a resort car and driven to meet my tour guide for the day. A small thing to note is that while there are many things to do at the mountain resort, you kind of need some money to do them. And I am in luck because there are GT Bank ATM machines at the resort. Hi. Hello. You are welcome to Good Mountain Resort. My name is Clifford. Thank Here you very much. Reception. Thank you. The first place Clifford took me to was a ride in the cable car. This is the longest cable car ride in Africa and the second longest in the world. After the cable car, I took a tour of the grounds at the presidential villa. You are a president for the time we are going to be in presidential villa. I'm a president for about maybe 10 minutes. That's right. and then went to the canopy walk to walk above the trees. But I finally ended my tour at Holy Mountain, spotting mini waterfalls and hearing stories of wartime bunkers. And that was how I passed my first day at the Obudu Mountain Resort. The next day arrives and it's my last at the resort. I'm picked up by a shuttle and driven to breakfast at the main restaurant. You see, when you're getting breakfast, there's the option of eating inside where it's warmer. But why would you want to do that with a view like this? The Abudu Mountains are really the sort of place where one could go to build a beautiful home. It's a place you go to really relax. So I spend my last day relaxing, unwinding, and taking in the spectacular view. Now I leave the mountains behind and welcome you, my friends, to the most cosmopolitan city in Africa. It's a melting pot of business, brains, and artistic beauty. This is Lagos City, home to over 21 million people and probably the most gracious hosts on the continent. Lagos has become home to all and it is so clear when you see how many people from all over the world are welcomed at the very heart of Lagos, its origins, Isaleko, Lagos Island. You see, every month at Freedom Park, which used to be a former prison by the way, artists and music lovers from all works of life gather to celebrate African music and culture. Because there's no better way to kick off an adventure in Lagos than with Afropolitan vibes. found Ade Bantu, who's one of the founders of Afropolitan Vibes. My name is Ade Bantu, I'm a musician, I'm also the co-producer of Afropolitan Vibes, a monthly alternative music concert that we do here every third Friday of the month at Freedom Park, Lagos Island, Nigeria. This is the place to be when you're talking about 
alternative music, alternative Ladies sounds, alternative people, everything alternative, not mainstream, because we are bored of mainstream. There are so many things to do when you visit an Afropolitan Vibes event. Whether it's buying palm wine, which is a local alcoholic drink, or checking out new books and movies at the bookstore. There is something for everybody. The fudgy is sweet and the groove is on. A great time is had by everyone. So next time you're stopping by in Lagos or looking for things to do, make sure you check out Afropolitan Vibes. It happens every month at Freedom Park in Lagos. Speaking of a Lagos that welcomes everyone, I decided the next day to meet up with someone who has just moved back to Lagos. I'm talking about Basi Ikli. Basi is a celebrated writer, poet, and spoken word artist. You see, I met Basi a few months ago and bonded with her immediately. So I thought, why not meet up and discuss some of her experiences in moving back to Lagos so far? Even though I left here at a very young age, um, my parents have never let us, my, my siblings and I, not be Nigerian. It's funny though, it's only been since I've been in Nigeria the last few months where I've said that I was American because it helps sort of explain to people why my accent's like this, why I don't speak pidgin, why I pronounce water the way that I do. It's only been here that I'm, I'm calling myself American or Americana, you know what I mean? So yeah. otherwise I'm Nigerian. Why then move back to Nigeria? What was that about? I came to Nigeria, came back to Nigeria for the first time since I was like 18, August 2012, um, because I wanted to perform in Nigeria. And, you know, I met some people and, you know, they put some stuff together. Um, and when I was here, I realized that despite all the problems that Nigeria has, and we got some problems, um, there's a lot of opportunity here. I've been fortunate enough to have met like amazing people, like, like you, you know, people who I consider family. And as much as I have had difficulties here, I've also had received so much support and so much um, encouragement and so much love. I'm a little smarter, you know, like a cab driver can't charge me 5K for anything. <laughs> anymore <laughs> you know but at the end of the day i'm not going to yell and scream at him either yeah i feel like they say you know nigeria is the giant of africa and it's it, it's become almost cliched because of a lot of the problems that we have but the potential for that to be a true statement is so real and anything that i can do to make it um to make that so make i want happen. to i want to do that Okay, so thank you very much for letting me come and mess about in your space and have this lovely chat with you. Thank you for uh, in Lagos Island, like this is, <laughs> to me, like just even being here is so iconic because behind us we have Tafar Balewa Square where our independence happened and, and it feels very much like right here is the bridge between the past and what could potentially happen in the future. Absolutely. So hopefully here's to a brighter future, less Absolutely. difficult one. Yes, cheers. Our, our would-be giant. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> The conversation with Basi kept me thinking about Nigeria's potential to really become the giant of the continent, of course with Lagos at its centre. This line of thought had me thinking about people who left this country for different reasons, like Mojid, who's a hip-hop artist and a friend, so I called him up and suggested a visit to Badagri. We checked into the Whispering Palms Resort, which is always my choice because it's safe and quiet. After checking in and dropping off our things, we briefly visited a former slave barracoon, also known as a slave barracks. It is sad to think Badagri was once one of the largest slave ports in West Africa. And if you visit, 
you will still see evidence of how little value a human life had. A bottle of a gin was being exchanged for 10 slaves. But there was aura story, a man that used the wives and the daughter in a change of a bottle of a gin. Yeah. Then this one we call the it. The visit was an emotional one. So when we returned to the Whispering Palms, it was to unwind and reflect. By the next day, we were ready to explore some more. You see, the resort itself holds a lot of history and activities, so we tried a bit of everything. The entire complex is a well-planned mix of history and recreation. We tried a bit of bike riding and revisited childhood in the jungle gym. We also greeted some animals and finally ended up in the lagoon. At that time, I decided to talk to Mojid about his story and his music. So let's talk a little bit about music because you're an artist with Aristocrat Records and you've been with Aristocrat for how long? Like, what's your story? Who's Mojid? While I was in school. Yeah. So I had one um, Aristocrat representative come meet me in London and talk me through, you know, signing with the label. Why, yeah, why did they meet you? What, what, like, what were you doing? Actually, they had been following me for, since 2007. I think we're trapped. <laughs> <laughs> they have been following me since 2007 and um, prior to like signing to them I was actually with a group called OMG so we actually did a lot in New York you know to get a little buzz and a little following so I guess that's where they you know took note of me. I mean what advice do you have for African youth really? Not just for music but for life. Do what you want man. It can't be any, you can't say it any better than that. Just do what you want and just believe. Do what your heart tells you. Definitely. Belief has taken us all far and there's still further to go. Our little break is done and I return to Lagos to explore more culture. Next, I'm meeting with notable photographer and conceptual artist, oh, Mr. Hi. Ade Adekola. Hello. Ade Adekola. Hi. Nice to meet you. you. Pleasure. Oh, Pleasure. Thank Get you. out of the rain. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh, Let's season. go this way. Thank you. How are this you is, doing? Well, very well, very well. This is, this is, this Ade's is photography is, is conceptual <laughs> art, <laughs> like and he time. plays around with powerful ideas Great. and images wow. as seen in his collaborative exhibition so with Brunar Champagne. This is the exhibition and my home also. So welcome to my home and welcome to the exhibition. Art is an object that is created. How that object allows you to experience certain aspects of your humanity, right? So an artist is a craftsman that creates an object. And the role those objects you know, uh, play is to capture some important, some important aspect of the way we live, you know, the way we should live, the way you know, some important element of our humanity, the way we should not live. You know, um, you know I often say that, you know art, you know, art is, you know, an object that has a cultural payload, and that cultural payload either allows you to determine something positive or not positive about your society. So, what is this exhibition? Well, I mean, you know, this exhibition, uh, Preto and Solier, is um, as a result of a collaboration between myself and uh, Renoir Champagne. Um, and what I've done is I've selected about seven bodies of work. So there is um, Icons of the Metropolis, there is The Emperor's Clothes, there is Fabric of a City, there is um, Ethnoscapes, uh, Icons as Transplants, um, there is A City and Its Faces, um, there is Chaos by Design, and there is um, one more piece which is Fading Memories. So those are the seven pieces that make up this exhibition. The, the piece which sort of resonates the most, I think, um, you know, from a, from a kind of payload perspective, cultural payload perspective. Uh, the pieces on the, the, the festival, The Emperor's Clothes, um, and the piece uh, Chaos by Design, which is um, a stunning image. Um, and, you know, you, when you see that image, you, you, will, you will feel it. You know, yeah. it just, just, you, know, you just feel it. What, what is it. How would you describe Lagos? Lagos is such, such a dynamic city. Um, you know, it's it, it's it's a, it's alive. It's vibrant. It's you know, you know, you have to you have to know how to engage with Lagos. I love um, just walking through and engaging with people on the street because you learn so much. You learn how warm the people are. You know, some people you know share stories with you. Um, you know, I've made so many friends. You know, 
Awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much, Ellie, for taking this time out. I feel like I've had like a private private showing of the exhibition, which is quite nice for us. So thank Spending you. time viewing Ade's work was an insightful example of yet another way to identify and belong. But to end the night, I finally went over to Bogobiri, which is one of my favorite local watering holes for a beer and live music. It's been a good day. But the Lagos adventures are not yet complete without a fun day at the beach. Though there are lots of beaches to choose from, one of my favorites is Takwa Bay. Getting to Takwa is also very easy. The trip takes about 15 minutes by boat to the bay. Tarqua is a small bay near the Atlantic Ocean and for years has been the perfect choice for beach lovers. Now, on a beach trip, it's usually a good idea to take your own food and drink. So once my people were fed and watered, it was playtime! I came to the beach with my brother, his friends, and all of our friends, so we all had a lot of fun. Because I visit Tarqua often, I found one of the local surfers to talk to, and his name is God's Power. Okay, yeah, so um, God's Power, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, when, when did you get into surfing? Yeah, I got into surfing when I was seven. You know? So, um, I started surfing when I saw two guys came in first time ever I've ever seen someone surf in my life, you know. Yeah. So yeah, when I saw them, it was amazing. I really love it. You know, I was talking to myself that I really want to do this sport. Mm. So I have to like, okay, please can I just get any of your old surfer on something? But I said no, no, no. I said yeah. the broken ones. You know? uh. So I have to like say body body with the broken broken board. But as time goes on, I started practicing alone. Like yeah. doing weekdays when everybody's there's nobody in the water, you know. Yeah. So I'm doing it, but my mom wasn't happy with it. Yeah. I do have that. Be in school, of, read your book. Of course, <laughs> that kind of thing. But as time goes on, I started getting it. I started surfing. Yeah. And becoming more famous in the surfing industry right now in Nigeria. Yeah. So, That's awesome. So how many years have you been surfing now? Um, I've been surfing for like more than twenty years ago. So wow, yeah. more than twenty years. That's yeah. a pretty long time, eh? So that's cool. So what do you do? So what is your like day-to-day -day life like here at Takwa? Like here in, in, in Takwa, I love living here in Takwa because it's more nature. Yeah. You know? I came back from work. I do used to work. I, I'm into a logistic company, you know. I used to come home by six, you know. There's waves. I surf after work. So it's just fun. Just a good life for me to live here. You know? Yeah. Then whenever I want to go to fish, I can catch fish too. I'm into spare, spare, spare shooting fish. Yeah. Yeah, as well. So it's a good place to stay because it's a nice beach, nice people, mm. clean water, easy for you to swim. Yeah. You know, M not much um, current though. Yeah. You know? So it's a nice place for tourists to come around to, to stay, and there's a, like, a lot of beach houses as well. See, that's been my experience. I got chilled here. Yeah. I haven't yet slept over. I'm supposed to sleep over. I'm going to come yeah. and hang out. Yeah. But it's so nice and so safe. I would say people come. This is one of my favorite things to do every week, for sure. Yeah. Hands down. But well, here at Aqua, we have the best wedge ever. Yeah. You know, when the swell comes up, this is the perfect place you're going to get the apron barrel. Yeah. You know, the water will be a bit brownish, but this yeah. is the perfect place to get wow. barrels. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so what time of the year do the barrel show up? Um, August. August. Every August. Awesome. Yeah, that is when perfect time to surf. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank it was you awesome, as always. We yeah, chill, see if yeah. we can catch some waves. You too. All right. <laughs> Tarqua Bay is a really good way to spend your day. Cool. Lagos is pretty much home to me. Although I originally hail from Ibadan, Oyo State, um, and also Cross River, um, Boki to be precise, Lagos is where I was born. Lagos is where I grew up. Lagos is my entire experience, as far as I'm concerned, of what it means to be a new African. 
It's so beautiful because on the one hand you can see all the things that need to be developed but on the other it is beautiful in nature and you, you have so much water around you, it can be so peaceful and so calm and only a few minutes away you have chaos and madness where things are growing, people are thriving, business is expanding at the most alarming rates in the whole continent. That to me is what the new Africa is. Lagos to me is a microcosm of how the new Africa is going to grow and it's a beautiful thing. Lagos will always be home, but more than that, Lagos will always be at the frontier of where new Africans are headed. We are enterprising, we are young, and we are African, and this is the future. This is the new Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Faz, aka Faz the Bad Guy. On today's lesson, I will be teaching you how to subscribe to the Indani TV channel so as to be able to watch more wonderful videos. All you have to do is click on this 